readers and readers, I'm Christy Stratus and welcome to part three of our Shelley Fredon event discussion. This is from the Sisters in Crime event that I told you about in the last two episodes. And so we're continuing today with finally hitting on historical and historical mystery specifically instead of just mystery and general tips. So one of the things that Shelley had said is really important is that it should sound modern but not our modern. So in other words, she's trying to she she was talking about it being readable from a modern person's perspective and sounding like something that is not dry, but at the same time it can't be our language if that language didn't exist at the time that you're trying to talk about. This is something I did in Anatomy of a Darkened Heart. I would look up a lot of words in a 19th century dictionary to make sure that they existed and sometimes they didn't and I had to find a replacement and sometimes I was shocked at the words that did and one thing that she mentioned that I thought was so important was sometimes you'll have a phrase that did exist in historical time period and you've looked it up, you've done all the research, even though it sounds really modern and it existed back then, and yet it just, it sounds so modern that you, you can't keep it because people are, your readers are not going to understand that this really was from the time period. It just sounds so modern. And that happened to her in a particular book where she had researched this phrase and when the editor, she's traditionally published, when the editor looked at it, she said, this is no good, you can't have this phrase, it's modern. And Shelley was like, no, I, I looked it up, I did all the research, and the editor still said, no, nobody's gonna know that, nobody's gonna understand it, you have to replace it with something that sounds more like the time period. So I thought that was an interesting thing to note. She said that historical details ground your story, which I am a huge believer in. You end up doing a lot of research, some of which you don't use a lot of, but it is very important that you're able to put those, like a word or two in even that describe what you're trying to say. Like for example, in Anatomy of Darkened Heart, the historical details, like I could have said that you know, Abigail put a rug down or something. But instead I said, well, what is that called? And I had to look it up and I found out that it's actually called a floor cloth at the time. And then there are oil floor cloths, which are way more expensive and it would fit a wealthy family and this, that, and the other, those kinds of details. And she had sp said specifically also, even a word or two can really make the difference between something that is really entrenched in that history. Shelley said not to lose focus and end up moving characters into your own time period. This was a really good point. This is one of those details that's very, very easy to forget. She had said, for example, if a woman is investigating in the 1800s, how much freedom did she really have? Could she have been investigating some kind of mystery at that time? What would her motivation be for doing that, especially depending on her class level? Classes were much more strict at the time. Well, depending on what time period you choose. I'm talking about the 1800s though. And that's really important. Another thing she talked about was not only the fashion so that if you describe what your character is wearing, it makes a lot of sense for the time period and is accurate, but in addition, if your character is in the 1800s and is female, you can't just have her climbing ladders. You don't know if she could really do that. You have to look up what the fashion of the time was. There was a time when corsets were so extraordinarily tight and the body was in an S shape. Could she really do as much activity as you want her to do in the story or as she needs to do in the story? She had also talked about the fact that if you have your character in a different time period in a particular job, that might enable her to have more freedom or the ability to go investigate something, to go do something, regardless of whether this is historical mystery. It could be any historical type of genre. That career or class that she's in, a lot of things could have to do with how much freedom she has. And so if you put her in a job, it could really make a huge difference. Even if her husband is a detective, that can make a difference to the amount that she knows about being a detective, how to go about investigating, what she has access to, things like that. I just really liked this quote. She had said, history is the ultimate setting. I just thought that was awesome because it really is. If I moved Anatomy of a Darkened Heart up to today, I just don't think it would have the same feel. It wouldn't look the same. I couldn't do the same kind of thing with the wallpaper that I did. I think it would make a huge difference. Of course, don't make assumptions about the historical period. Never assume you know. Just because you saw it in some kind of drama, like she brought this up too, just because you saw something in Downton Abbey, doesn't necessarily mean, for example, that that's going to work in your book. What if your characters are middle class and you're looking at a high class family in Downton Abbey? What if yours takes place in America and the system was very, very different from the English system? There are a lot of things to take into 
into account. So that's, it sounds like a no brainer, but there are actually a lot of different parts to it. One thing that Shelly suggested was doing something that parallels with now, if you wanna make people realize that something is pertinent to today. I mean, sometimes that can happen by accident and you can end up with readers saying, oh, this really makes sense. I'm so glad that this author put this out now. It really fits into today. And there are other times where you might wanna bring out, you just want people to understand something or whatever it is, and you use something in the historical past to show, hey, this is repeating itself or something along those lines. So that was just a good point to make. She also said, don't write a story where you can change the character's clothes and it's the same story. So essentially if you change the fashion, regardless of the time period, you have the exact same story. I thought that was interesting because it means that you have to pay attention to those historical details. You have to make sure that whatever was going on was doable at the time and that it all makes sense. Even the character's psychologies can be completely different in a different time period. I mean, just imagine if Anatomy of a Darkened Heart took place today. Uh, if you haven't read it, then this is a little bit more difficult to understand, but you've got some suppression of women and needing to get married to escape their family. And that would not necessarily be the case today or in a lot of other time periods or country. Maybe the country makes a difference. So that's something to also keep in mind. And also sticking with the history, make sure that the travel makes sense. If you're saying that somebody is traveling from point A to point B, and it's impossible in that time period for it to take two days, like they'd have to take a train and that would take a week, or they'd have to take a coach and that would take even longer, then you need to see what were the roads like at that time, were there the bridges that there are today, what was the travel back then, and that can get tricky, but it's worth the research because if you do it wrong, people are gonna call you out on that, and that's really, really painful, so definitely look that up. There's lots of information online about that or at your local historical society. So thanks for joining me today. I will see you again tomorrow for even more exciting stuff. I'm really enjoying doing the series. Honestly, I, I took a lot of notes, and I'm enjoying telling you what I think of each of them, and and sharing them with you. I think they're really useful. So I will see you tomorrow.